Okay, thank you. So thank you for uh, having uh, invited me to give a talk uh, today. Uh, so I am Mathieu Kort, so I'm professor in Sorbonne University, and I also part-time at uh, Valeo uh, AI Research Lab. This is the lab uh, where uh, Patrick uh, Perez uh, was presented the talk uh, before the, the lunch, okay? So most of the work uh, that I'm, I'm presenting today uh, have, have been done by two of my uh, PhD students, so uh, Eddie Ben Younes and uh, Rémi Cadet, okay, in Nipsis in uh, Sorbonne University. All right, so th the, the, the question is, is uh, some, some kind of new task that I want to, to introduce today uh, that is kind, quite new in the computer vision uh, uh, community, and uh, this is the visual question uh, answering task. Okay, so basically, actually, the, 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 the things changing with the, the question answering, and the, the classical way, I mean, to, to, to have the, the question answering task is to ask a question and to look something in a, in a text about that. And with the, in, the, in the visual uh, question answering uh, uh, case, actually, you still have like a question, a textual question, plus one image, and you try to, uh, okay, so, uh, find the right answer uh, in, into that image uh, knowing the question, okay? So it could be, for, for instance, something where you are looking for somebody here, Claudia, and, uh, uh, and the system should be able to, to, to find if uh, she's sitting uh, at the bottom or standing up uh, somewhere, uh, etc. okay? So for, for us, it's a, it's a very good uh, playground, I would say, that uh, where we can mix actually some, somehow uh, textual and, and visual information, okay? And uh, usually it's uh, in another way than just considering that we have our image as input and we try to find some, some keywords for, let's say, the classification, uh, usual classification tasks that we have, okay? Here it's quite more interacting and it's a, it's a part of what we call the human machine interaction, okay? So this, is, this could be seen as a, the first step, this, this kind of task, okay? Uh, up to some, somehow having some more uh, friendly interaction with the machine that may uh, see something and that then also uh, should be able to answer to some question that we have. Um, all right, so le let me first okay, say a few, few words as an introduction about how we can handle, I mean, when we, we try to have like two, two things, uh, text on one side and images on the other side, and typically, I mean, the, the first uh, key uh, uh, task to, to, to make them is to try to align them, okay? So I'm going to, to, to give some few, uh, few introduction about that before going through the, the, the VQA framework, right? All right, so the, the basic at uh, the area of the deep learning, the, the basic way to represent this, this kind of things is to consider, of course, two big uh, deep, I would say, one for the visual part, okay, that can be a convnet or other things. I'm going to give some, some uh, example about that on one side, and then on the other side, we, we can have some, some kind of uh, recurrent neural net in order to be able to embed also uh, in a common space that, that, that we can call a multi multimodal space, okay, both, uh, both things. And all right, uh, and, and of course what we want to do at, the, at, this, uh, at this point is really, I mean, like having some, somehow some uh, uh, powerful alignment between, uh, between these two media, okay, in the sense that typically we are able to, to, to use some distance, some, some, some uh, neighborhood in that space that makes sense. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, in, in, in typically, if if we have like a good a good cross embeddings, okay, what we expect to have is that if uh, I put some some uh, <coughs> some query input as textual things and I um, embed this uh, this text into my my space, that to have close to that text or that sentence some some images that make that can match with the. Uh, the content and the, 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 the meaning of, of, this, uh, of this sentence, okay? All right, so, uh, yeah, basically this is the, really the first step is how we can do that, okay? Let me just mention that um, um, uh, with this, this, just this kind of thing, we, we are able to do some retrieval. I'm going to, to show you some example. But of course, if you are also able to, to reverse some of the function, let's say here, this uh, operation. So if you 
are able to generate from, from this space a new sentence. In that case, then you are able to do what we, we call uh, image captioning. So because then from one image, you can go through this uh, embedding and then uh, uh, generate a new, a new sentence for that image, okay? Right, so, um, and of, of course, if you are also interested in reversing this step, okay, so this is basically that you, what we can do with the GAN approach or things like that, so generation of, of one image or plausible images from, from one, one, okay, um, artificial, we say, uh, uh, symbolic space here, okay, I can uh, then do some, some somehow image generation or conditional image generation, so I can generate one image from uh, just one sentence. Okay, this, this kind of something here, right? Okay, but for today, it's just enough to see ho how we can just uh, uh, build the, the, this kind of system that may uh, able to uh, align uh, at, at least some, some contains that coming from these two heterogeneous uh, things that are visual part on one side and textual part on the other side. All right, so, uh, the, the first step is to design, I mean, uh, um, and so to instantiate what, what can be done. I mean, there's, there's uh, uh, embedding functions, and of course, usually you have a, a, a lot of things to learn inside uh, this function on both sides, all right? All right, so uh, this uh, certainly the seminal work on that was uh, presented in NIPS, and that, that was really, I mean, like trying to embed from just the ImageNet data set, so you have like your images, and then for, uh, uh, you have on the other side, let's say 1,000 classes, okay, so 1,000 uh, single word that you can Im embed in the, in, uh, as a vector uh, as a vector first, and then you can try also to adapt uh, this kind of scheme, to adapt one uh, um, visual embedding uh, in order to align I mean, the images with the representation of their classes, okay? In a more general way, actually, you can embed uh, whatever you want as uh, a full sentence, okay, or uh, it can be one, one word, a piece of word, or a full sentence, okay, on both sides. And uh, so there are plenty of methods that, that try to uh, expand and uh, extend this, this uh, seminal work, and we, we did uh, some proposition about uh, that last year, uh, trying to, uh, at least to keep some uh, special information into the, the deep. Okay, that we, we embed the, the visual information. So here, usually it's, it's, it's based on uh, your classical, I mean like a backbone uh, architecture that can be a ResNet or an Inception or whatever, okay? And uh, producing some, somehow some, some block of uh, representation that keeps keep some, some uh, special information. So that, that what is important is that you keep the, the fully convolutional uh, net uh, here. And we keep it uh, for uh, a new stage, and then we have the, this kind of last projection. And for for the for the, for the text, okay, you do transform. I mean, each word in a, in, a, in, a, in into the vectorial space, and then you, you can use. I mean, like uh, uh, for instance, uh, the, the GRU or any kind of LSTM. So we use the SRU here, okay, just to be able to transform. So your sentence into only one vector, okay? And, and then, okay, you, you project both them together here in that space, and so the question is how to learn, I mean, the right way. You have many parameters everywhere, okay, here. You can, of course, use a pre-trained model that, that have been pre-trained, for instance, on, on the kind of uh, ImageNet data set, okay? But then, after, it's, uh, it's a real question on how you can fine-tune everything here, right? And so you have to define some, somehow some, some cost function here, okay? So because you know like uh, for a relevant pair, so a relevant pair is one image and the, the right caption uh, coming with the, that image, okay? So it gives you here some, somewhere to uh, X, uh, X and V uh, vector here, and you try to align them as much as possible, okay? So uh, of course, you need a data set of, of this kind of thing, and you need also to define, uh, of course, the cost function here, and uh, more generally, the, the, the objective uh, function that you want to, to optimize, okay? So usually, I mean, like, people uh, started with uh, this kind of pairwise, okay? But let's say after, it's, uh, it's much more uh, useful to use this kind of triplet-based learning scheme in order to, to learn of, uh, all this, this kind of thing, all right? 
But my point just today is that unique training set, okay? So you have plenty of way of uh, uh, um, defining or finding training set or, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the community. So they are very classical uh, training set. I will show you example just, just after uh, uh, with the COCO data set where you have like images plus caption coming uh, together. But let's say just that you, you can find uh, on the web or uh, in other kind of uh, specific context many, um, many times that uh, the, the, some data are coming uh, with already uh, some, somehow a, a pair, a pair, a relevant pairs. Let's say, for instance, for the cooking recipes, I mean, some of our colleagues have present um, from MIT have introduced this, this kind of very large data set that is more than uh, one million uh, recipes, okay? And one recipe is coming with, of course, uh, <coughs> textual part, okay? Let's say the, the, the caption on one side, and on the other side, one or seven pictures of, the, of, of the, the plate cooked, okay? And so for us, I mean, they are already aligned, so it's like uh, free, I mean, like uh, very easy, I mean, like to, to, to get a huge amount of data with that, and then we can train the system I presented before uh, to be able to align the, all the data, all this data, okay? And so we have a demo, you, you can try uh, tonight, for instance, at the party, okay? You just, uh, uh, with, you, with your mobile, it's, it works, of course, and then you can <coughs> train, okay? So you, you just take a picture of what you are eating, okay? And you ask the system to find the most uh, relevant recipes uh, that corresponding to, the, to that picture, okay? So this is really, I mean, like the way that we, we can align uh, uh, textual and, and visual information in that space. Okay, the, the more classical data set, as I, as I mentioned, is a Cuckoo data set. So uh, you can test also your system and, and then uh, during the testing, okay, you, you ask for, for instance, a, a textual query. So you go into your uh, multimodal space and then you retrieve uh, the, the, the five nearest neighbor corresponding to five images, right? Uh, that, uh, okay, typically could uh, uh, illustrate uh, the, the, the sentence. Right, and of course, it can be reversed, and you can ask, uh, put a query, and ask for for textual uh, uh, interpretation. Um, okay. Um, also, one what point that uh, we we also add in in this uh, recent paper uh, I, I mentioned before is that the the ability I mean like to localize or so what what we call to ground actually the content into the image. So the textual content may be not only aligned with the whole image, but you can also adapt and try to find which part of the image is much more relevant thanks to the query uh, you consider, okay? This is the only way actually to find beans in burger, right? So this, is, this was like uh, the, the name of this, this paper was just on that. If you ask for a burger, you can localize in that image that the burger seems to be like a science map, identify on that part, but if you say, okay, I'm looking for some beans, so I want to localize uh, as much as possible where are the beans into that image, and you will find it on, on the right uh, of the burger, okay? So it can be, it can be done for, for in, in many ways, but this is a kind of information that is really important and meaningful for the VQA task. That's why I, I'm mentioning the, this kind of, of things, right? Uh, so, because you are going to see that in the, the VQA uh, process, it's, it's very interesting to have like some, some more uh, um, uh, accurate uh, localization of the textual query uh, into images, right? Okay, so that, 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 that was for, for the, the global uh, alignment uh, between the, the two kind of, of media. Let me now, okay, go into the, the main part of my talk of today uh, on visual question answering. Right. So, if I, if I uh, again, continue with the, the same kind of uh, picture, a uh, big picture I, I gave uh, to you before, um, I would say that now, okay, it's, it's, it's a more complex, uh, I mean, association that we are looking for here. I mean, like the multimodal space has to mix in another way, it's not an align, uh, alignment, okay, between the uh, visual and textual uh, information, 
Okay, um, uh, and typically uh, in, that in the, 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 the first data set are coming like that. So let me just give a few examples of what, what could be, I mean, the thing we are looking for. So we have like a picture of a pizza and the, the question may be, so we can have, of course, several questions for, for the same image, okay? That can be how many pieces we have here or uh, does this person have uh, 20 out of 20 uh, vision, uh, etc. or what is right of table uh, for, for that kind of thing, okay? But if you just think that for two, two different uh, here uh, things, you, you want to have like uh, another uh, uh, or different answer, you uh, can imagine, so that means that the, the way that you want to align, I mean, the things together may be uh, more complex than in, uh, in the previous uh, um, alignment, okay? All right, and so typically, I mean, like uh, what people also uh, notice is that when we just change a few words in, uh, in the question, it may be have a, a big impact in the, in the answer, I mean, completely change the answer. And, and, and on the symmetric way, I mean, you can have like uh, very similar images in terms of uh, con just content, I mean, uh, people uh, smiling, uh, two people, and let's say young people, and happy people, I don't know, uh, uh, whatever, uh, the, the, the ambience that you have, okay, seems very similar. The same question and also different answer, right? So that is just to say that we really need for, for, for being able to process and, and to, to find the, the right way to, to, uh, to, give the, to give an answer here, to have like very good, of course, a very f um, powerful and, and um, um, visual uh, deep uh, representation, embedding, I would say, and of course, uh, a very good uh, uh, question, textual based uh, representation uh, also, all right? And the, the two things that I'm, I'm going to, to develop uh, after is, is really, I mean, like the, the key, uh, the, the key um, uh, points for uh, the VQA, that is how we can merge uh, uh, the, 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 the different things uh, on one side, and also how we can do some, some, how some reasoning that can be attentional or other kind of, of reasoning into the image. Uh, all right. So let's say, as I, I said before, you, you, you take your favorite uh, 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 textual encoder uh, for on one side, so that gives you some representation vector or representation for your question. You can do, and th this is a static point, the, the, the same kind of thing with a, a beautiful coordinate on the other side, and then you keep also one uh, vector representation here, all right? So before going into the, the, the detail of that, one, one thing very important is how we are going to represent the, the output also for this kind of system, okay? As I said, uh, the, the expected output is just, I mean, like uh, some uh, sentences, okay, that can be expressed in a natural language, okay? But if you, if you have a look on uh, how we build the, this, that, this data set, okay, you and, and then also how we evaluate, I mean, the quality of the answer after produced by, uh, by the machine, okay? You see, it works like that. So for, uh, it's, uh, it's triplet <coughs> actually, okay? So you have one image, you have one question here, and they asked a uh, human uh, uh, to answer, okay? And you have, so 10, ten different uh, people that uh, give their answer for each of the question, okay? And so basically, if they, they all say the same thing is, uh, is good, but sometimes even we, for, for, for instance, what, what color is the sign, okay? It can be uh, red uh, quite uh, uh, many times, but also red and white or red slash white or things like that, okay? So the way that is evaluated after, okay, is uh, that if you, if, uh, you give, I mean, if the system gives the, the same answer as at least three, three person, Okay, uh, it's okay, right? Okay, uh, and and so uh, this is the way that th we can evaluate the system, all right? But uh, what we notice, and, and uh, in the community, I mean, like uh, everyone is is doing la the things like that. I mean, to to keep some uh, times for for the evaluation, is that you can rank, I mean, all the answer, all right? And you can select, uh, uh, let's say, some 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 how the the most frequent answers. Okay, and you just limit the output space to these answers. Okay, and doing that, of course, you lose some, sometimes a little bit. So you know that, uh, of course, your system is not able to answer to s s few of the questions. Okay, but very few. Okay, but the gain in the other uh, uh, um, side is that 
you just transform your, your, uh, your problem in a classification problem. So your output now is uh, maybe represented as one or up to the, the 3,000 classes that you have, right? Okay, so at the moment we have like image representation, question representation, okay, emerging and then now, and the classes are at the output, right? So let me detail now how we, we do this, uh, this kind of mixing, okay? As I already mentioned, you, you can take take your, your, your favorite, I mean, ResNet or things like that. Um, uh, I, I will explain also how we can combine with other more tricky things on, on the image style. And the same for the question, it can be at, at least, I mean, like as a baseline, some, some kind of bag of words or representation where some more uh, tricky things uh, combining uh, uh, the, the vector representation with the GRU or things like that, okay? Right. <coughs> okay, so the first point is that the fusion, so what I call the fusion is, is really, I mean, like the operations that were well, here, okay? So I just consider the embedding of my question, I just consider the, the embedding of my image, okay? And so I ask what, what kind of fusion, okay? So how to merge, how to mix these the two uh, uh, vectors in order to keep, to, to keep more information and to be able, so I can have just a, a softmax or I can have a, so an additional block of deep uh, fully connected here before going into the, the output space that is like uh, my 3000 classes, right? So, uh, yes, one way is of course to consider MLP, so I just concatenate and I go through a bigger deep, right? Uh, or I can consider on the other side some kind of linear combination, I mean the, the most uh, easy uh, thing to consider before going to, to deep uh, if necessary. But, okay, what uh, is, I, I've been uh, n um, um, so noticed in the, the community is that the, the best way, I mean, the, let's say the, the king uh, way to, to, to solve this, uh, this merging is really, I mean, like to do an element-wise uh, product, okay? That can be, of course, combined with before a projection on each side and then uh, element-wise the product. All right, so we started to work with that and what, uh, uh, and, and we, we try to put that in the, the, in the general uh, framework, of course, where we, we, we can find these two, I mean, like leading methods, uh, that state-of-the-art method for, for the visual question answering, okay? Uh, implementing the, this kind of bilinear things, right? So the main framework is really, I mean, like to, to, to come back to the, the most general way to, to consider the, the, this bilinear uh, fusion, okay? So it's a, it's a tensor. Uh, you can express the things with uh, the T uh, for the, the, the global tensor, okay? That, ca that can have as many uh, parameters as you have like uh, dimension uh, for, for each of the, your input and, and the output, right? So uh, at this point, something very important is that for uh, signal processing guys, I mean, the tensor is, is known for a long time and they are uh, uh, running ma many different methods for that but it's, it's tensor of data. Here, I mean, the, the main difference is that the tensor that we consider here are parameters. So we just want to put this parameter, all the tensor are parameter, and we want to find the best parameter for our merging uh, and, and then for our classification after problem, right? So this, this uh, can be uh, at least one, one big difference, right? Okay. So typically we are not interested as, as for signal in having like a, uh, interpretation or what is inside this tensor. Okay. It could be useful, but it, it's not the final goal. The final goal is to find the, the, the best parameters for our classification task, right? Okay, but uh, saying that, right, if I just consider my, my two vectors here and uh, like a, a certain size of the vector also that I can take the same, for instance, uh, at, uh, for the output, I, I'm, I'm just stuck here, because I have to, to manage 8 billion of, of, of parameters just inside the tensor. So there is already, I mean, like a huge amount of parameters uh, before and after in my system. And just here, just for, to merge, I, I, can't, I can't work with that, okay? So signal processing guys come back and say, okay, but you can use some things to reduce actually the number of parameters in your tensor, okay? Trying to structure the tensor. 
And, and uh, also the, the artificial uh, intelligent point of view of that is that it can also give you some, some interpretation of, of what you are and the way that you are trying to mix the information. So it's also interesting in the, on, on, in the framework of, of what Mala explained, I mean, two days ago about having the, this kind of, of a geometrical approach that try to put uh, anything in dips. But as soon as you are able to put some structure in your dip and you can explain or interpret how your structure is working, you also make like a, a, a step further uh, to, for the, the, the global uh, interpretation of your system. Right, so, <coughs> uh, yeah, w one of the most common way, I mean, like to, to, to do the tensor decomposition is to consider the, the Tucker uh, decomposition that is basically expressed here. So what you say, sorry, is that uh, each part is uh, projected, okay, with a matrix projection, okay, on the vi visual side. Uh, the same thing for the query side, okay. And then the same thing at the, at, the, at the output of your core tensor. So the core tensor that is here may be full, okay, because you already reduced the size. So you can consider here a, a, a full tensor, right, a full parameter tensor. And then you expand uh, the output with uh, the last uh, product. Okay, with a, again uh, a matrix product at, at the output, right? Okay, and so if if I come back to the two leading techniques I presented before, I mean I can put them into this kind of big picture, and I can show how they are in terms of tensor decomposition. So even if they are not presenting as as using uh, explicitly the tensor decomposition in a, a, as a uh, Tokyo base, we can rewrite them and, and see that typically the, the compact bilinear pooling is doing some, some, some kind of uh, li, um, um, uh, sim, simple, simple uh, uh, projection here considering only diagonal matrix with uh, plus one and minus one, okay? And some, some uh, also fixed base ra random, um, uh, uh, random strategy, very, very fine random strategy, but here considering the full tensor. Right? And so the only parameters that they learn <coughs> are at the, at the output. Okay? So that makes the, the system quite simple. Right? Uh, the, the MLB that the other one, okay, you consider that all the parameters that you can learn in color here are coming for the projection okay, for, of the input and the output. Okay? But you do not learn anything inside the core tensor, that is a block diagonal tensor, okay? Element-wise dot product, it may be represented like that, all right? And, and then uh, what we, we uh, presented was like somehow some, 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 something that uh, is really, I mean, like the, the Tokyo base, okay? We follow the, the Tokyo base, so that means you have the projection that you can learn, and also somehow the core tensor are full of parameters that may be learned also, okay? And the idea is to be more expressive in the way that we can combine, of course, the two, the, the two visual and textual information. Right. Uh, okay, for, from, from that, from, okay, from, for, sorry, from that uh, mutant base, okay, we, we also uh, say that uh, this, um, this core tensor may be still quite big, and there is, again, two ways to, to, to limit the number of parameters inside the, the core tensor is to consider some, some, some kind of matrix reduction, okay? So we can limit each slice to be uh, low, um, uh, with a low number of uh, eigenvalue non-null, okay? So we can control, I mean, uh, let's say the rank of the matrix. It's one way that we have proposed. And the other way is, is also to say, I can consider some, somehow some, uh, this, this uh, Tucker base uh, decomposition, so the core tensor to be uh, uh, block diagonal. So I also put again a small uh, a structure on that block that may keep some, somehow a quite big um, size, but having inside only some, some uh, block uh, that are non-null. And uh, actually, it comes also with the, 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 the kind of more general uh, term block decomposition of the, of the tensor. That may be also uh, unfold as exactly the, this kind of thing, as if you will consider a few different decomposition, or, or right, and recombination of uh, all your input. Okay, so th this is the, 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 yeah, the, the same thing, just to, to show in the, 
on the, on the left way on how we can write everything as just a projection and a, a tensor block uh, multiplication. Right? Okay. And then uh, after after that, we 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 have been able to we are able to uh, typically I mean evaluated all this this kind of uh, merging scheme that we can have. So we consider I mean that. We, we take the same, the same kind of uh, feature uh, representation, so the same kind of, uh, of deep uh, for, for the image, deep representation and deep representation for the, the question, and we just, just change and compare how we can gain by uh, paying attention to the, this, the, the merging scheme. Okay, and so just to conclude on this, uh, this part for the, for the, the merging and, and the fusion, okay. Just to say that uh, uh, bilinear models are, are quite efficient and, and very, I mean, still, I mean, the best uh, models to do the, 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 the merging. Uh, uh, typically, and is, is a better way, and th that's quite nice for deep, it's, it's a better way that just considering, I mean, like I concatenate my, my two uh, uh, input and I go through a big deep uh, from that, right? And the, the way that the association is done is quite different. Okay, it's multiplicative uh, term by term, and so it's quite interesting, and it's not so easy to get this kind of, of result, of combination, with a big dip, right? whatever the nonlinearity you have. Right? Um, and, and also, a last point is that we recently uh, see that there are many, I mean, this kind of, of, uh, of merging okay, may be efficient, uh, not only for VQA, we just presented here, but have been used for any kind of, of uh, deep merging when, when you have two branches and you need to mix them together. Uh, it's always a good, a very, um, I mean, a strong option to consider this kind of uh, bilinear fusion for that. All right, and so the last part is about um, uh, the, the, the reasoning. So uh, after merging the reasoning in VQA, so the, the, the main point is, is that can we, I mean, like go uh, one step further with the question uh, for driving, I mean, the way that we analyze the image, okay? Uh, up to now, uh, and, and this is one example of uh, an artificial uh, data set that have been introduced uh, very re recently. And this, this data set is really dedicated to uh, uh, having some kind of tricky, I mean, analysis that is needed uh, to uh, correctly answer to the question. So we have to analyze what is the uh, large uh, things, for instance, uh, what is the, the color, what is the, 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 the texture of the thing, and compare two of them and count uh, with a, uh, a, f a third one and so on, right? Uh, in, in terms of uh, visual uh, VQA reasoning, I would, I would just consider so attentional process or attention process. Uh, rela relational things, uh, iterative, so multi-step uh, reasoning and, and composition of things, right? So the first part, the, the most easy to, to understand and to introduce what could be uh, really, I mean, like uh, somehow having a reasoning step in the, into the image is uh, exactly the thing I consider in the first part. That's, that's why I, I, I was introducing you uh, to that, is uh, <coughs> saying that for one query, Certainly, I mean, not all the, the, the parts in, into my image are relevant to answer uh, correctly to the, to, the, to the question, okay? So, um, one example, uh, detail here, if the, the input image on, on the left is, uh, if the question is what is sitting on the desk in front of the boys, right? Uh, it could be interesting to have like this kind of uh, science map, as I presented before, just to, to say, I don't care about the other part of the image. So I really, is, it, is it better to focus really on this part and to analyze correctly just this part of the image to be able to, to, to give the right answer, okay? And so up to now, we were considering only, I mean, like one big vector to represent the image. If we want to keep this, this kind of special information, we need to consider like, let's say, a grid base or let's say a block-based vector representation. Each of these vectors here are localized, I would say, in, inside the image that do not represent exactly the same information uh, uh, from the image, right? And so, 
from uh, keeping this uh, special information in a fully uh, convolutional uh, deep net, for instance, we are able then to start to have this kind of attentional process. Okay? Let's say the, 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 this big thing is an attentional process. And after, if you just forget this, you are still have like the, 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 the new representation of the image that have been merged to, to take into account of the, of the, um, the, the, the what, how is the question. Okay? And then we uh, have the, the same thing as before uh, to give the, the right answer. Okay? This part is really, I mean, like the attention process. And the attention process tells you that I want to, to merge, so I want to select in the, in the whole space what part, what are the parts that are important or relevant thanks to my query, okay? So thanks to the question I have, okay, to answer to the question. And typically this, this can be seen as a, like the, the PI, and then after I can just remove all the, the VI representations that are all here, the vector I, I consider here, and just keep the right one. Right? So we are able, of course, to learn all th this kind of thing together. Okay? So it's really end-to-end -end learning uh, f at, at this step. And what you see is, is, is that, of course, if you ask for a second question on the same image, you should have this kind of, so this is true result uh, that we obtain with this kind of system. So if, if the question here try to say something what is uh, um, located uh, on, on, on the first part, Okay, it takes this kind of uh, science map, and the answer is that. And if the question is about the, the share in the background, okay, the science map will tell you, uh, will tell you exactly uh, this, this kind of things. And thanks to that, the system is able to, to uh, uh, correctly answer to the, to the question. Okay? Of course, one step further is to consider that uh, perhaps we need to have not, two, not only one map per question, but perhaps several maps may be considered, so we can combine them, and then it's just a straightforward extension here where we are not defining only one way to, f to focus for one image, but several ways, okay? So we, we have th this kind of system where we will have several, uh, let's say, um, uh, attention maps that are then uh, putting all of them together to get the right answer. And what, what is saying here is that typically if for one question I need to analyze the train uh, somehow and also as a smoke somehow, I, I will, if everything is going uh, working correctly, I will certainly have one map that will be able to focus on, on the smoke for, for that question or that image and the other one on the train. And then when I combine them together, I, I can give the right answer. All right. So at this point, uh, we still have um, uh, another extension to consider is that not working with a fixed grid, but considering like um, a bottom-up process uh, given by another, uh, let's say a deep detector, okay, trained on another way and so on. And by just saying that instead of having this kind of uh, grid and deep, um, deep block on a fixed grid, I will consider the output of another system coming as the representation of my image, okay? So you can consider typically, I mean like, the different region plus, of course, the, the, all the attributes that have been learned also in a different uh, setup before, okay? And so thanks, thanks to that, you are able to, to combine with exactly the same thing as before, and you were state-of-the-art up to, uh, to 2018. All right? The next step uh, important is, is also to consider some reasoning. So I'm, I'm not going to, to go too much into the detail of that, but it could be, I mean, the, the, the way of reasoning between the different parts of the image that you consider. So typically, if you use like uh, as here, some bounding boxes corresponding to the detection of the different object in your image. You can, uh, you, you can add also some relation in between the different blocks that you put into your system to trying to, to be able to have like a attention-based process that is based just on, the, on the each elementary, I mean, block, considering alone, plus somehow uh, uh, any kind of relation that you can have in between the block, of course, and you are going also to bias this with your query in order to select the right one that makes sense and that allow you to give freely. 
Okay. All right. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, also some, some, something very interesting is the, the way that when you want to have like multi-step uh, reasoning. Okay. For some of the questions, it's very interesting. I mean, like perhaps trying to first uh, do some job. Okay. For, for instance, here, find bicycle. And uh, so the idea is that to have like this kind of attention map that f really focus on the different uh, bicycles here. And then after to select the one, so the bicycle with a basket, okay? So to be able to focus just on, on that. So from that result to be able to, to, to focus on the bicycle with the basket, and then after to analyze what is inside the basket from that state. So recently we, we just uh, finished uh, a work uh, that will be presented in the next CVPR. So um, uh, on, uh, trying to, to put all them, these things together. Okay, so attention process. As you can see here, you focus on, on, on some, some sub-part, sub-region of, uh, of the images. And then from that first uh, selection, you are able to go to through the second part. So it's uh, really like a multi-step reasoning that we, we have here. And uh, we also integrate in that, in that model the, 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 the way to, um, to, to model I mean, the, 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 the visual relationship between each part of, of, uh, the, uh, of the image. Okay, so this is the big picture where you see, I mean, the different uh, steps of the process. And this is one uh, mural cell here, okay, that I mentioned, that take as input the, your query, so your textual representation, plus your visual representation that is now all the blocks that you extracted with the, your detector, plus, of course, where they are, okay? And so the idea is to mix or to merge this to, in order to be able to have like this kind of uh, bilinear attention uh, process to, to, to select, I mean, the right, um, 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 let's say, uh, region correspond, uh, I mean, that makes sense for answering to the question. And then also some relations in between all of them, okay, coming up also with a special relation that you can have into the image. Uh, to provide, I mean, the next, uh, the output for the next uh, input in your uh, multi-level cell, right? Okay, and uh, so here, just to illustrate, uh, I mean, on, on, two, on few examples how it works. So for this kind of question, uh, so, uh, what is the question here? I can't remember. Uh, what game, yeah, okay, what game they are, they are playing? So. Uh, they are uh, playing uh, bullying, actually, uh, right? So it's, uh, you know, it's a uh, bullying that you play with a, a joystick. So it's a game, uh, uh, electronic game. And, and then here, the system, what we see, uh, interestingly, is that we see how the system is able to, to, to really, I mean, like, focus on, on the, the, the most important part, that is uh, the controller, the joystick on one side, and uh, the screen on the other side and also taking into account uh, the, the, the way that there's the two regions are really, I mean, like the most um, in connection together uh, in, uh, in the, after the, the, the first step of our uh, uh, process analysis, right? And of course, we, also, we are also able to answer to different questions for, for the same image. And you see uh, in that case that the, actually the system will um, iteratively, uh, uh, yeah, okay, uh, be able to focus on different things, of course, that, that the whole image into the, in, in, into the, the, the processing uh, in order to find the, the right answer there. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, just uh, one slide. Finish. All right, so you can evaluate everything. And my last message, I, I skip this, uh, this slide, is just to say, that there are plenty of data set okay, uh, that have, have been done for in, in very few years. I mean, from the first VQA data set that have not uh, more than four years. And every year, I mean, like, we produce new data sets that try to correct many biases that, that can be, be, uh, uh, happen in the, in the first data set. And also some data set that may really, I mean, like, highlight on some points on some kind of question, on some, some, some way of reasoning, typically, into the image. Okay, so I would say that th that one that was really, I mean, like the most complicated one in terms of, of uh, 
uh, having a very fine reasoning in, in, in order to be able to give the right answer, but was completely, I mean, like synthetic data set, have been declined in the same kind of things, but this kind of, of quite new data set that try also, thanks to uh, some, somehow some kind of uh, graph relation in between all the objects, to produce many different uh, questions that ask I mean, the, the, the machine, so the system, to really be able to analyze different parts and to put them together in order to, uh, to give the right answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Uh, are there some questions? Question? Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, so I didn't understand, uh, I may have missed this, where the saliency maps actually came from. So how, how you established those. Uh, all right, in, in this, uh, in, in I mean, the, uh, the first part, in, uh, okay, I didn't explain very well uh, how, how it works. Uh, uh, yeah, further yeah. before, I believe. Yeah, uh, that's it. Where do they yeah. actually come from? Yeah, so typically here, I mean, th this kind of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, um, uh, attention map, are the output of this uh, fusion process, okay? So actually here, the way that you, you merge the things together is try, I mean, like to produce this, this kind of uh, information. I mean, the size of this uh, block here is exactly the same size as the one that you have here. So now you are representing your image as a block, and this block has a size, okay, a, a special size that give you for each of them somehow one vector, okay, uh, and this vector will be considered an, an in, in, the, in the merging scheme here with that, with, with the query, okay, so with the question, in order to produce some, some weight considered as a science map at the end, okay? Okay, is there another quick question? Yeah. How do you see a domain adaptation? Okay, so the question is, is there some, some, some link or some, some things to say about domain adaptation and this, this kind of uh, system? I would say that uh, uh, the data set and the way that we build the data set are very, I mean, like, uh, as is, a, is a big question, okay? As I mentioned at the end, we have a lot of biases in, uh, in, in, into the, this kind of data set, but I would say that at the moment for the evaluation of, uh, of uh, the kind of, of query we have, we do not change from one data set to another, okay? But this is really, I mean, like an actual question because as we have more and more data set for, for training, they are all different and considered as the, uh, different at, 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 at this point, but it's a, it's a question for us uh, uh, today to see if we can take benefit, get benefit from, from one data set uh, already trained with a lot of training data to learn things that could be helpful for uh, another data set. Uh, okay. So it's more about transfer than domain adaptation, but it could be also. Very quick question. In, in one database, it's mentioned that questions are generated from scene graphs. Uh, would you try to put re, uh, a 3D model somewhere? Um, you see, because all what we saw was 2D, but uh, try to embed a, a 3D model somewhere with logical constraints. You see something like that. It yeah. is probably somewhere, but yeah. it's not explicit. So could uh, you try to? No, it is not. It is not in. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, all the all the thing that you can do. I mean, actually, uh, where, where I put it in this. When I uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. When I just mentioned that the, the fact that when you are uh, going from yeah a fixed grid, so that is like a classical deep representation for of your thing, to something that extracts some some detectors that have been learned for to do something, okay. At this point, if you want to be and if you are able to, to put some some deep or some some whatever I mean system that is able to uh, to model somehow some three D representation mm -hmm. here. It can help, but mm -hmm. it, it is not in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much again.